Hey YouTubians, what's up? I'm another XYZ and welcome back to another Club Banger. Today we're hanging out in r slash dating hell. Stories of when dates go real bad. So we're gonna go ahead and hop right on in. This first post is by the user Wombat Furrer. The title of the post is First Date at the Emergency Room. TLDR. My date has a panic attack that lands us both in the ER for four hours but at least I walked away with a new career path. I met this guy on Tinder. We had two or three drinks together at a bar in Midtown Manhattan, right after I finished work around midnight. Things were going well. He was cute, funny, and my kind of sarcastic. We worked together in the same industry. I was a server and he was a bartender. He told me he was cat sitting at a friend's apartment nearby and offered to take me back there. I agreed, access to an apartment on 40-something street and 8th Avenue in Manhattan is insanely rare, and like I said, we were getting along. We made out at the apartment. The cat was cute, I'll skip the details, but at one point I pulled back from the heavy petting for my own personal reasons and asked if I could smoke a little weed and relax. I always had a joint on me at this time in my life, so I pulled it out and lit up out the window with a fan on, of course. He previously mentioned back at the bar he used to smoke marijuana, but no longer did because it made him super paranoid. You may be able to see where this is going. I suppose, perhaps, he thought if he partook, he might get laid. Perhaps he was flying high and super confident because the date was going so well. I'm not sure what his reasons were, but he asked to hit my joint and I obliged. He took two small pulls. Everything was great for about 45 seconds. Things unraveled quickly. He started holding his heart and complaining of palpitations. He was concerned about his heart rate being too fast. I tried to console and cuddle him and get him to relax. He was not having it, so I suggested that we go for a walk, thinking perhaps I could find him a late night slice of pizza that would help. I couldn't immediately find my phone, but I figured we'd be right back, so I left my things there. My second mistake of the evening. He agreed to take a walk, but only because there was an emergency room listed on Google Maps around the corner. I laughed it off, thinking all we needed was some food. We walked the block and the emergency room he thought was there was actually in urgent care and it was closed. He grew increasingly more upset. He repeated we need to find a hospital. I knew where the closest was, but he didn't believe me. He pulled out his phone to look it up, and the second he did, the battery died. This sent him into a horrifying spiral about his heart rate and his stress levels. He was positive he was having a heart attack. It was around 2 or 3 a.m., and bars were still open, so I told him we could just go into one and ask the bartender to look up where a hospital was for us, or call 911 if needed. The bartender he spoke to raised her eyebrow at his story and rolled her eyes at me when I explained he was really stoned. She then poured him a glass of orange juice. Legend. But before we could make him drink it, he'd run outside. The bouncer refused to let us back in. I don't blame him. On the street, I asked two guys walking by if they could please help me out and to look up the nearest hospital on their phones because my friend was having a panic attack from too much weed and didn't believe I knew where I was going. They looked at each other for a second, wondering if they were about to get robbed, and then laughed and helped. Also legends. As soon as they told us the hospital name, my date ran into the street and hailed a taxi. I jumped in with him and immediately asked if he had the money for the cab. He did. Thank God. Then I got a little grumpy. Up until now, I hadn't actually believed we'd be going to the emergency room. Now that I realized this was really happening, I was pissed. I left all my stuff at that apartment, and I couldn't get back without him. He started crying in the cab because I was mad at him. And at that point, I resolved to see this through because fuck man, the crying was pathetic. At the emergency room, Triage stood behind him and tried not to tap my foot 
and roll my eyes while he explained what was going on to the clerk. The security guards tried not to laugh. I chatted with them for a second and told them this was actually a first date. Their humor made me feel better about the situation. My date told me I didn't have to stay with him, but I reminded him that I actually did since my stuff was at that apartment. He offered me the keys, which in retrospect was incredibly irresponsible of him, but I refused because like I said, I had already resolved to see this through. The triage nurse gave him an EKG, during which he repeatedly asked if he was having a heart attack. She kept telling him she wasn't a doctor and could not tell him anything definitive about his condition. She also reminded him that he was not a doctor and also couldn't diagnose himself. I loved her. Legend number three. He was moved into a bed and he changed into his hospital gown. I couldn't believe I'd found this person sexy and attractive hours earlier. No one looks good under fluorescence. We were seen by a resident who explained his heart rate of 120 was a little high, but within normal limits. His EKG was fine. The resident was also very kind and explained this was called the golden hour at the emergency room because of the prevalence of these types of calls early in the morning. The nurses kept making jokes about how we needed to get married since this was our first date. I laughed along, all the while remembering this had started because I really didn't want to fuck this guy. They continued to make him wait to see a doctor, which I think was a strategy to give him time to calm down. I crawled into the hospital bed with him and held him and made jokes. By the time we got our two minutes with the attending physician, he was all better. I waited while he went through billing. Lucky guy had insurance. I still can't say the same. And we made it back to the apartment around 7 a.m. I remember the clerk the guards, the nurses, and the doctors so well from that night because of the amazing good humor and professionalism they held throughout. I was fascinated about how they could be so unfazed by everything, as if this very thing had happened to them a thousand times before. It almost certainly had. On arrival back to the apartment, I couldn't find my fucking phone. We looked everywhere, but since it was on silent, it wasn't happening. I finally gave up because I just wanted to sleep. I told him I'd get on my computer at home and make it do that weird alarm sound for lost phones later that afternoon. He found it buried deep in the framework of the futon, and I went back that night to pick it up. I asked him how he was doing, and if something like that had ever happened to him before. He said yes, it happened the last time he smoked weed. I did go on a second date with the guy, Mostly because I knew he'd feel completely terrible about himself if I didn't. We saw a movie and it was a bit weird. I stopped dating men after that. Less than a year later, I quit weed and went back to school to become an EMT. I love my new job. I'm ready to handle any marijuana-induced psychosis that comes my way. Just as a frame of reference for all this commentary, I come from a state where marijuana is legalized for both recreational and medical use, so keep that in mind. But I just wanted to say that if somebody offers you to smoke some weed and you know that your response to that is having a full-on panic attack slash meltdown, then don't smoke it, my dude. If anybody offers you dergs and you don't want to take them or you know you're going to have a dang old ding dang response to some drugarinos, then don't do it. It's always a bad choice. Just no. Although, it's very interesting that this person turned into a whole new career path. So I guess it's one way to find what you enjoy in life. This next post is by my girl Ginny Weasley 99 I know it's her actual full name, Ginerva Weasley, but let's just say that you're having a really terrible time with Harry Potter if you are in the Dating Hell subreddit. TLDR, date with a very vulgar guy. So I meet a guy online and go on a couple of dates. He's sweet, but if anything, he's a bit on the shy side. For circumstances beyond our control, there's a bit of a gap between the second and third dates. In between said dates, he starts sending me very flirty and sexual messages. I thought it was weird, but he didn't push it when I changed the subject. So I still agree to meet again. He doesn't drive, so I'm picking him up at his place. 
I arrived late because my sat-nav had broken, but he insisted that instead of going somewhere closer to home, we'd still go bowling. As soon as he got in my car, he grabbed me and started kissing me. He was like a sloppy, groping washing machine. Not good. On the way to the bowling alley, he kept making uncomfortably sexual jokes and made it clear early in the date that he presumed I'd be going home with him. When we arrive at the mall, I suggest getting food. He insists on going to McDonald's over any other restaurant there. He orders the cheapest thing on the menu, but spends the whole meal telling me about how much he earns and how successful he's going to be in a career he doesn't even work in. At the bowling alley, he picks up a bowling ball that matches my hair color and tells me that it's no coincidence that I'm ramming my fingers into that one. He proceeds to make several other awful jokes about practicing with balls, etc. He repeatedly touches my bottom as I bowl, despite me flinching away on three separate occasions. He uses showing me how to ball properly as an excuse to grab my ass. At the end of the game, I say I'm going to the toilet. I spend 15 minutes there, wondering how I'm going to let this guy down gently, because I'm not going home with him. When I return, he tells me about what a wonderful evening he's having. Back at my car, I have to open the door for him, as it doesn't have central locking. After patronishingly telling me that I was attempting to open the wrong door, he grabs me again, tells me I was so romantic for opening the door for him, and starts to washing machine kiss me again. It was the point that he started slipping his fingers down my jeans that I panicked and blurted out, I think I like you as a friend. Needless to say, that was a fucking awkward drive home. Yo, don't put your hands in people's pants without getting permission. How hard is that, dude? And just based on this whole thing, there are so many signs here that this person was not interested in anything that you were doing. And the whole thing about like picking up a ball with the same hair color and putting your fingers in it and being like, I'm ramming my fingers into that one. Just what about that is attractive speech at all? Like that would never work in any real world situation. And if it does work, you found yourself quite an interesting individual because nobody would like that. I get the impression just that on a third date, nobody would enjoy this at all. Just, ugh, dude. Just yikes on a trike. Major oof. And of course, let me know what you think about these stories in the comment section down below. Also, if you have any suggestions for any subreddits, drop those down there as well. If you liked the video, remember to hit that thumbs up button. If you disliked it, the other button works as well. Remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my videos. And like I say at the end of most of my videos, no glove, no love. Peace.